Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Kingtone Technical Training. I'm Leo Liao with Kingtone, and I'll show you how to do Java's customization in Kingtone. Let's get started. This material was created based on September 2020 version of Kingtone. We may change our contents without prior notice. Before we start, there are several items that we will need. First, you'll need to have a Kingdom account with administrator's access. Second, you will need to have some understanding with at least one programming language. In this tutorial, we will work with JavaScript. Third, you have a Google Chrome and a code editor installed. We will be using VS Code in this tutorial but you can use other code editor based on your choices. Lastly, you have downloaded the app template and imported into your Kingtone platform. You can find the GitHub links below for the app's template and the PDF of this presentation. This tutorial includes many links for you to find out more details with what we have discussed. Please make sure you download this PDF presentation file so that you have access to these things. Let's talk about the agenda here. We will start with fundamental JavaScript on the web. Then we will introduce Kintone's JavaScript API. We will then quickly review some advanced concept of JavaScript with promises. I will also show you the structure of JavaScript in Kingtone using ES5 and how to upload the JavaScript file. We will have some fun and do some hands-on in the end of this tutorial, so make sure you stick with us until then. Let's review the fundamentals of JavaScript. JavaScript is event-driven, meaning that it gets triggered by some events such as a user action, some signals or output from another location. It is asynchronous, meaning that it will continue to execute the next line of code, even if the result of the current line is not ready yet. It allows the user to interact with HTML and CSS, and thus making change to the UI and improve the user experience while browsing the web. It also contains common feature with other programming languages in the sense that it allows data processing as well as using a variety of APIs. There are many types of events available. Some of the common ones include when the DOM is loaded, when a user clicks or scrolls the page, when typing in the keyboard and when the synchronous request is received after finishing fetching the data. We will cover more in the promise section of this tutorial. We respond to any event by using event handler, so call the event listener, which is a function that runs when an event occurs. Let's take a look at a common example with event listener. First of all, look at our code here in the middle. We have input element and the script element. Make sure you provide ID for your input element so that JavaScript can get this element. Inside the script, which is where we will be providing JavaScript functions, you will need to tell JavaScript what element are we looking at. We will do so by var input equals to document dot get element by ID, and we will pass the ID, which is this ID right there. Then, once you get the element, your monitor will track any changes that happen with this element by using add even listener function. Once JavaScript catches the change event in this value, it passes the event to the event handler the change handler, which is right here. And we are simply console logging the output of the input value there. So this is what you see inside your HTML 
And this is what you will see inside your console. Let's take a look at another example. The results are exactly the same. The only difference is that instead of passing a handler function, which was declared at the top, I simply put the function in line as part of the add event listener function. This function inside another function is referred as a callback function. You can also use an inline event listener in alternative to add event listener by including an unchanged attribute inside your HTML input element. Let's take a look at the different example. On the left hand side, I have I'm using the event listener on load to see whether a window object has been loaded yet or not. Once it's loaded, it will execute this function, which is console log window is open. You'll find the window object inside every web page you browse. On the right hand side, you can use the event listener on load to track your status with an XML HTTP request on using unload to catch successful response or on arrow to catch error response. Let's look at some Intone JavaScript API. We will go over three common sections of Intone JavaScript API. The events, the get set data, and the RESTful API. The Intone JavaScript events. Let's compare conventional JavaScript with Kintone's JavaScript. In the conventional JavaScript, your event target can be anything and any HTML element that you have built. And the event you use will be click change, load, and or set up. You will be using the add event listener to watch out for those events. Whereas in Kintone, you would have access to not only the HTML element, but also the record value and the fields itself. Kintone also has its own event type where you can use them when you need. There's also a comparable event listener in Kintone for users to watch where those events are executed. You can find more detail in the link below on Kintone's event. Let's do another review with conventional JavaScript. We have two input elements and the script element on this page. Each input element has its own ID. Inside the script element, we first declare a calc age function which helps us calculate the age by passing a date in it. Then we first add an event listener to watch for the change value in the date input element. Once the user selects a date, it releases a signal of the change event and thus trigger the callback function where we first get the value of the date which was what the user has chosen. And then we pass the date to the function that we define above. Once we get the output result of that age, we can then define and send that value to our HTML code so that every other user can see the, what the result is. We will use same example in Kintone. Note that you would not need to create your own input element because you would use Kintone field instead. The logic is the same. You set an event listener to watch for change. 
of the value in the birth date field. You trigger the callback function. It finds what the date value is, performs the calculation based on that date value, and then we output the result to another Kintone field. We return the event, then you will see the result. If we put both examples side by side, you'll notice a significant resemblance of the structure between Kintel and the conventional JavaScript. Only the syntax used for the event listener and the events that are slightly different from each other. Let's take a closer look at Kintel's event listener. Similar to the conventional listener, you define the type of the event to watch for, and you pass a callback function or handler so that it gets triggered when the event happens. In Kintel, you would have to make sure you return the event object at the end. This is because JavaScript is implicit, so if you don't return the value, it doesn't return anything for you. There are all the things you can do with the event object in Kintel. You can get or update the field value. You can enable, disable a field or edit. You can show the error message on each field, or you can show the error message of that record. Here are some examples if you include asynchronous calls during these events. Keep in mind that if it's a field change event, which means a single field has been changed, you will need to use the get set method in Kintel in order to update those values. Get set data. You can use the get app ID by typing kintone.app.getID parentheses. You can also get the record ID, get the record value, and set the record value. Remember, when you set the record value, you need to include the object of the record so that it notes what you're trying to update. You can also use the get set method in DevTool. Let's talk about RESTful API in Kintone. So here's the basic structure of Kintone's RESTful API request. Kintone.API path or the URL, the method, which is get, post, put, or delete, and the parameter. This is important to have when you need to update or create a new record. You can also use this parameter to filter out the kind of data that you want to fetch. At the end, you can pass an optional callback to catch any successful response or an optional error callback to catch any error response. Now, remember that if you don't pass the callback function in there, you will get a Kintone promise object as a return. Here are some examples with using REST API and the promise object. The one on the top did not include a callback function and thus you can use stop then at the end of the function. Whereas, since there are callback in the example in the bottom, once the API is performed, there are no responses needed to tie with this API call. You can try out those API examples in the dev tools as well. By copying and paste the code provided here, you can see the result coming out. 
Let's talk about my favorite subject in JavaScript, which is the promises. One major difference to be aware of is that the native promise may not work in the older version of the browser, whereas Kintone promise is designed to work in all versions of the browser. Remember we've talked about JavaScript being in asynchronous languages? Promise is the major characteristic for that. When you run a promise for one line of code, it initially starts with being a pending status. JavaScript will continue to execute the next line of code. When the status of that promise becomes fulfilled or rejected, it will return the result back to your code. Now, because we don't have any ways to track how long would it take before we get a return result from that promise call, it would create issues for your following lines of code if it depends on the result of that promise. This is why we chain promise call with that then and that catch. They are often referred as the then able object. It basically tells JavaScript that it would only continue to execute the following lines of codes after you've received a return result from the promise call. Here's a closer view at the structure of the promise call. Remember, that then is for any successful result, even if the, even if the return result is empty array or zero it is still considered as a truthy value. Whereas catch is for any error while calling the promise API. It is recommended that you include it both when you use promises. You can also use multiple chaining for your promise object by using that then over and over until you get the result that you need. Please remember though, JavaScript is implicit, so you need to put a return at the end of each function. If you forget to put return result, your next dot then will then show undefined. Here are some basic patterns of function structure for synchronous, asynchronous with callback, and asynchronous with promises. Please copy these line of code into your dev tool and see what the results are. Those are simple calculations uh, by adding the first variable and the second variable. The return result for the first one should be 3. The return result for the second one should be 7. And then the return result for the number third should be 11. Let's talk about basic JavaScript structure in Kintone with ES5. First of all, you have to use the EV structure. EV structure is referring to immediately invoke function expression. This puts a closure of your code to prevent it being affected by the global state that has already existed in Kintone. Also, remember to use the use strict mode so that it helps you debug and eliminates any silent errors. JavaScript is an interesting language. Sometimes it ignores any silent errors you have, but by putting use strict, it will make sure that it displays all kinds of errors back to you so you know where the problem may be. You will then include your event listener and handler inside the ev function. Once you finish writing your code, you go to the designated Kintone app to upload the, uh, the JS file via app setting. You can either attach actual file or include links to your file. 
please be noted that you will need to upload your CSS file separately. And in addition to that, you will need to attach a separate JavaScript file and CSS file if you want to run those code inside the mobile version of Kingtone. The links are useful when you want to include additional JavaScript library such as jQuery or Bootstrap. Remember though, the orders of these JavaScript links does matter. If you're calling a jQuery before you import jQuery, you will get an error. The general rules of thumb is that any library that you use should be on top of your code. I will walk through these steps again during the hands-on. All right, let's do some coding. Please make sure you download the app template file and insert it into your Kingtone platform before you continue if you want to follow along. First, open your Sales Deals app. The first customization we want to do is to apply different background colors to the sales stage field depending on what the value is inside the sales stage. You can see a detailed list of all the fields that I have created for this app on the right hand side of the screen. Please keep in mind that the field code columns are the variables we can use inside our code. Since cell stage is a drop-down field with six different options, we want to have a separate color for each option selected. This is the final result we want to achieve. Inside detail view, we have a purple pink color for our cell stage because it's a close one. Inside the list view, I wanted to make sure every record has colors applied to it according to the value of it. Let's identify what's needed to happen in our coding logic. Based on our requirement, we know that we want to add event listeners in those two events, app.record.detail.show and app.record.index.show. The detail.show displays a single record, whereas the index.show displays a list of records. Then, we know that once these events happen, it triggers the process of changing the background color of the sales stage field. Here is our basic structure to start with. We included two event listeners here, and when each event happens, it executed our function, which is the change sales stage field color function, which is defined at the top. Let's go to my editor and I'll show you the process from beginning to finish. So I have already included our app template. I will go to the cell steel and I will add a new record for testing purpose. I'll leave the company name blank for now. I'll write the deal's name as Kingtone Technical Training. The rep is automatically populated. The cell stage, I'll use the first one, which is the qualification. Expected close date. Could be anything, but I'll put it at the end of this month. Deal size, I'll put nine, five nines. Probability is 100. And sign contract value is 888. I'll put a note section here. Click save. Now, to reiterate what we want to do, we want to make sure this cell stage the background color for this particular field is changed depending on the value over here. 
So let's go to our JavaScript file. I have a snippet, so I'll use that snippet first. I'll make sure this is big enough. Now remember, we are using an EV style here in Kingtone. So I'll make sure I add a parentheses at the end of the code so that it executes. I will also use the strict mode so that it returns all the silent errors in this record. Now we're currently testing in the detail view. So I will make sure I duplicate this function. I'll change this event from index to detail. Because the detail view, it, you're only de dealing with one record. So I'll make sure that instead of records, I'm typing record. The first thing we want to do is to find out what the value is for self stage. So I will do var self stage is equal to record dot self stage dot value. Now remember, this self stage is the field code for this field in Kinto. And I'll show you where you can find that. You would go to your app setting. Inside your form tab, you will hover over to the self stage field. You click setting and field code is defined at the bottom. Let's go back to our records. So now we have the value for the self stage. The next thing we want to get is the HTML element of this field. We will use a Kington built-in function called kington.at that get field element. And we will pass the field code in there. Now, notice there are two types of element. Right now, I notice I'm making a mistake by calling kington.app.getFieldElements. This is only useful when you are inside the index view. So I'll make sure I include a record a get field element. This will give us one single element. And then we have a function called change self stage field color, which I don't have it here just yet but I know that I will pass two parameters into it. First one is what the element is, which is the self stage element. And then we also have a value field that would be our self stage right there. At the end of your code, just remember that you would always need to have a return. Let's create the change self stage field color function. You can use a uh, function decoration or you can use function expression. That's what I have over here. In here, first of all, I want to destructure my parameter that I passed in as an object. I will do far element equal to parameter dot element. And then the value is parameter dot 
value. I will also have a background color. The default value is undefined. I'll do a switch statement based on the value of the value variable. This is basically our self stage option. My case one is qualification. If it's in qualification, if the user has selected qualification, the color should be this. I'll make sure I have a break here. Now, let me just use one for now, as we wanted to do some testing of this code before we write even more. The next thing I want to do is, if I know that my background color has a value in there, so I'll use if background color is true, then my element, I'll apply a different background color to my style of the element, make sure it's equal to that background color. Let's execute this code and see if it's working. In Kingtone, I'll go back to the gear icon, which gives us access to app setting. I'll go to customization and integrations. I'll select JavaScript. I'll click app file here, and I'll import the file that we have, which is change BG colors. Remember, I'm working on a PC, so I'm uploading JavaScript in PC. You will need a separate one for mobile device, and you will upload CSS file separately as well. Once I uploaded the file, I'll click Save, and I'll click Update App. I'll go back to the record, and now you'll see a different color for qualification. Let's finish the code by adding more conditions so that the color changes depending on different option of your code. So I'm going to duplicate this line of code. I know that my next option is evaluation and when it's in evaluated, when it's in evaluation, I will have this value. I'll do, I'll do the same thing one more time. And I know that my next step is negotiation. And that background color should be 34 FFF5. And then for the close one, I want the color to be F9 B1 FB. And this is the same color as the contract. The last one we have is closed, lost. And the color should be C6, C3, C3. Let me upload this code and see if it's working for all other options. We'll go back to app setting. We'll click JavaScript and CSS customization. We'll delete the existing code and we will add new files for this new one. Click save. Click update app. Click 
click the records one more time. Qualification is still working. That is great. I'll click edit. I'll change the value to evaluation. And now you see a different color being applied. Let's try all the options. Negotiation is working. Close one. And close lost. Now, you can also do more with this one. Let's say I wanted to indicate when the when the deal is is contracted. We not only that we have this current background colors that we have, we also want to make this text bold. What we can do is we will just add another uh, another variable. I'll call this the final rate. And inside where the contract is, I will add uh, weight is also equal to bold. At the end of our code, we'll make sure that if we have a value inside found weight, we will update the element style and its found weight to be our value of found weight. Let me upload this file again and we'll see if it's effective. So go back to JavaScript, delete the existing file, add the new file, click save. Update the app. And then open the records or the record. We'll go to the edit and it's contract. I am not sure if it's just my eyes, but feels like it's not, um, the found way does not apply. We'll figure that out later. What I want to do now is, I also want to make sure this code is executed inside the index.show so that when I have multiple record in the list, it would display the color based on what it should be. So to do the testing, first of all, let me duplicate the existing record. And I'll hit duplicate records one more time. I'll select a different cell stage for the new record that I just duplicated. Now we have three records to test with. Let's go back to our code. So now we know in the list view, we have multiple records. We can, first of all, get all the HTML element here in this, in this view. So first thing we will do is we'll do var, self stage element, next, and we'll do kingtone.app, dot get field elements and we will pass the field code in there which is our selves stage your field code should always be the same inside the same app 
whether you are in the detail view or in the index view. The next thing I want to do is I will run an iteration to the records. So we'll do a for loop R i is zero while i is smaller than the records that length i should increment we will then have the individual record value with each iteration and with our index number then we'll understand what the self stage value is with each iteration. So we'll do the same thing, self stage that value. And then we'll get each individual element by using the elements that we have at the top. And we can get it by passing the index number. Same thing over here, I'll call this function, change self stage field color, and I'll pass in the same thing that I have passed in uh, with my previous function. So value is self stage, self stage. Just remember that you need to return your event. Let me save this code. I'll upload this code into the JavaScript customization. have done the code successfully and it changes the color of the cell stage to a different color based on the value of it. It looks like we're able to complete our requirements here. So we set even listeners on two events and when each event happens we extract the record value out from the, the event object. We also needed to fetch the HTML element so that we can manipulate the background value later. In the detail.show event, since it's a single record, we will only need to pass the above result into the handler function and return the event. Whereas inside the index.show.event, since we are dealing with multiple records, we needed to iterate through the list of records extract the value and the HTML element before passing it to the same handler function. You can find the full code inside the GitHub link. Last but not least, in our handler function, we run a switch statement and determine whether we need to apply new color and found weight. If you need to have access to the complete code in the GitHub link is given in the slide here. Let's move to the second requirement. This time, we want to include an update logic to our probability field, changing the percentage from 0 to 100 or vice versa depending on only three options of the value inside the self stage field. If it's closed lost, then probability becomes zero. Whereas if it's closed one, or if it's contract, then the probability is a hundred. We will need to use three events here. 
app that record that create that submit app that record that edit that submit app that record that index that edit that submit the create that submit is for events that gets triggered immediately after you click save button while creating a new record the edit that submit it triggers immediately after you click save button while editing an existing record. The index.edit.submit triggers immediately after you click save button while editing an existing record inside the list view. The operation is update this field code or excuse me, update the value after confirming. So let's start with the basic structure here. As explained in the previous slide, we will add event listeners in these three submit events. Once it's triggered, we will call back our handler function, which is at the top. We will wrap all these codes inside an EV function and we'll be using, using the shrink mode. You can find the starting code in the link given in the slides here. When we execute the code, we should be seeing a debugger in action. Debugger puts a breakpoint to pause our execution here. And you will also find the console log message that I have included in my code. Let's run this code in real time. I have a snippet already, so I'll put income submit. And I need to make sure that I include the parentheses so that it executes this function. Now, you can run multiple events. You can watch multiple events by using an array and pass all the events inside this array. Let's try uploading this code first and see if we can get a debugger message. And before I do that, I'll make sure that this is big enough for what we want to see. So I'll go to the app setting. I'll go to JavaScript inside customization. And I'll add the new file, which is update probability. Now remember, because we're using submit dot, uh, create that submit or edit that submit here, so it only gets triggered when we click save. I'll click edit, and before I click save, I'll make sure that I have my dev tool open. Now go to console log, click save. And now you'll see debugger in action. What I really like about debugger is that you can go through every step. And when you hover over to some variables, you can actually see their property uh, of this variable from, from the get-go. This is one of my favorite debugging uh, mechanism in JavaScript. And then in console, because I have this console log event, so I know that when this submit that uh, edit that submit happens, I would have the app ID, I will have the record, and I will have the record ID, and inside the record object, I would have the value for the fields that I have inside this record. Let me click this play button so that it continues. Let's go back to our code 
and this time we'll add some more properties in it. So first of all, we still need to know the cell stage and I can do so by doing var record equal to event.record because we're dealing with a single record so I only need to pass, I only need to find record. We'll do, we'll find the value of cell stage by using record.cell stage. We will find the probability or probability find the current value of probability by using uh, record probability and I think I have a capital P inside my field code so I will do it this way this is going to be your default value now uh, depending on what fields you're using sometimes you might want to attach a number function to make sure that you get a number you don't have a number and the value you have is a string let's say your current value is 50 and it's a string if you try to do any operations on it instead of 50 plus 50 is 100 it will become 50 plus 50 and it would return to you as a string so we need to make sure that we turn it into numbers before we do, we apply any operations to it. I will have another one called the next probability. This is going to be my new value, new probability value. And right now there should be nothing. So if my cell stage is equal to close, lost, What I want to do is my next probability is zero. Else if self stage is equal to close one or self stage is equal to then next probability should be 100. Let's execute this code to see if it's working. So I'll go back to the record. Let me close my console for now. I'll include JavaScript. File, update probability, click save. Now I'll update the app. I'll change one existing record for now. So if I change this to close one, or because right now I have 100%, so let me change to close loss. And then if everything is running, then we should have a 0% down here. Now, before I do that, I realize I haven't uh, make update changes so that the record value is getting the next probability value. So I'm actually going to say record.probability.value is equal to my next probability. This way, I'll finish the assignment and I'll, uh, I'll, sorry, not the assignment, but I'll finish setting the new values to the probability field. So let me upload this code one more time. And I do wanna mention that there are tools available for you to have the ability to upload your code as you develop. 
so you don't have to upload your JavaScript code each time when you make a change. It will automatically be reflected. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, later. So let me change this to close lost. I'll click save. And it looks like we're not executing this code. So let's find out what's going on. And this time we can actually use a debugger here to help us figure out what's missing from our code. And uh, let's see if I can close lost. Next probability is zero. So I added a debugger and I will upload this file. And we'll try it again. It will be as what it is. And when we click save, huh, now it's back to 0%. Interesting. Maybe I just didn't click save. I'm not sure. But at least we know that the code is executing. So we'll try to, uh, we'll apply uh, more functions here. And we'll see if it also uh, if it's working. So let me try this. Uh, let me add this new things in there. In the requirement, we know that we want to have an alert message to the user that hey, I'm changing your probability. So to do that, we want to do if new probability or if next probability it's not equal to no which is its uh, default value. And next probability is not equal to current probability. And we'll use confirm uh, function here and we'll make sure that the user uh, wants us to, is okay with uh, us update the value here. So update probability, we'll, we'll add some syntax to tell the user, hey, your updated probability is going to be this next probability. And uh, let's see here. probability plus okay I just need to finish typing there We'll just notice the user we're changing it because the self stage is uh, so on and so forth. Let me make this line a little bit smaller. Uh, just so that we can see an overview of what's happening here. So if next probability is not equal to uh, no value, is not equal to no. And if next probability is not equal to the current probability value, 
and that the user confirms that we should change. So if this happens, then we want to say record uh, probability a value is equal to next probability. Let's try execute this line of code. I'll keep the dev tool open because I know I'm, I will need it. And I'll, instead of using the shortcut, I will go to the app setting and I'll upload the JavaScript file. Let's use a different record for testing. So if I click edit, if I change this qualification to close lost, I'll click save. Now I see this confirm message because I'm using close loss. My next cell stage is close loss. So the next uh, updated probability is 0% since it's close loss. I'll click OK. Now it's 0%. Now I notice um, I might need some spaces here to make sure it's running, uh, it's running smoothly, but that's where I'm missing. OK. I'll have a uh, a bigger view of the current code. And let's review this code one more time. So going through the steps of the handler function, we first get the record, we find what the cell stage value is, we got the current value of the probability from that same record, um, and we want to make sure that it's converted into a number. We define an empty variable, a uh, null variable of uh, new probability. And the next one, we will run an if condition to say if the cell stage is equal to close loss, then your new probability is zero. Whereas if it's close one or a contract, then it's a hundred. Then we want to make sure that if the new probability is not new, and if it's not if it's not equal to the current probability, and that user confirms, that user clicks OK, that yes, please update. Then you reassign the value, you update the value. Uh, by using record.probability.value equal to new probability. Then don't forget, you need to return the event. And now you should be able to update your code. So we see that inside our testing, it was successful. We changed from 100% to 0%. Actually, let me just test it out one more time. And this time we wanna change from uh zero percent to a hundred percent so first of all i'll create a new record i'll put as evaluation nothing um well i'll put nothing in other fields and i'll put 10 percent in the probability field and let me update this record i'll say it's a uh, we won this deal and we click save. Now we know that it's 100%. And once we click OK, it's 100% now. Update is done. Boiler. A 
Again, you can find the answer in the GitHub link given in this slide. Let's do some more. This time, we want to implement an API call to update the record in a different app. Let me talk about what we want to accomplish here. I would like to add the ability to track when was the last time I had contact with this account. So I have a company list app and I wanted to know, well, when was the last time I spoke to this company? To do that, I will need to go to my company list app. Switch over to the screen. I'll go back to the sales space. I'll go to the company list. I already have one record created here, so we will just use this. And I don't have the fields that I need to store when was the last con contact date. So I'll go to the app setting, I'll go to form. I will drag and drop a new date field into the form. I'll click on the setting of this field and I'll change the name of the field code to last contact date. I'll change the label here as well. Now changing the label here does not affect your code, but it's always nice to tell the user what this field is for. Once I'm done, I'll click update the app. And you'll notice I now have this new field but I don't have any values in there. Great. Let's go back to the slides and we'll talk about what we need to do next. We will need to go to the contact lock app and what this setup is each time when we have a contact history with a specific company name, this state value here needs to get passed to the company list. So it basically sends a API call from the contact log app to company list app and pass the date value from this app to this app. To do that, we will need to use the same event as we did with the last exercise. We will use the create.submit, we'll use the edit.submit, and we'll use the index.edit.submit. Our operation will be, we'll use the RESTful API to put record, uh, which means to update the record, and we'll update the field of last contact date. Let's do, let's open the template uh, for this code and you can have access to the template by clicking on this GitHub link. Okay. We will go to um, our cell space and we'll find the contact log. Let me just open it as a new tab here for now. And I want to make sure that I am opening the update date file. So over here, I'll use my snippet, which has all my submit event. And I'll make sure I execute this line of code. I will 
upload this code to the customization in JavaScript. Cut the file, update date, and click save. And I'll update the app. So, and I'll open up my dev tool. Over here, that's the date value. I know that I want to pass this date value to uh, my company list, uh, to, the val to the field where it says lost contact date. And I'll use this company search list as the value so that the API knows which record is am I trying to update. This is useful when you need to input your log with the company you have spoke to. I'll click save. Now the debugger is running. It stops right here. And I can see the value of the event from here. It's great. Let's see what we need to do for the next step. So we have a handler. This is what we have as default. We will, uh, first of all, we will define which app ID uh, that we will use. This is going to be the app ID of the company list app that you have. We will define what the company name is and we will define what the date value is. Then we'll pass all these information into the API. Remember the structure of the API. The first one is the URL in which you can actually use kingtone.api.url and then define which specific API we want to use in it. We will define what method we will be using. Because we're updating a different record, we'll use put. We will, inside our parameter, we will include the app ID. We will use the update key. Now this update key is, it should be a unique field. And we will identify which field is what we want to use. In this case, is the company name. And the value of the company name, you will get this from your contact log and we're passing the record value with the field code that we want to update this field with this value. Once everything is complete, we will use dot then and we will return the response. Let's go over, uh, let's break down the structure just a little bit more before we dive into it. We have a synchronous processing block over here, which is your promise object. And then we return the event at the end to make sure it gets updated. Let's go back to our code. I'll exit out from this one. So first thing first, we will need to know which is the company list that we have, which app ID is it. So yours might be different from mine. The way to find app ID is by going to the app itself. So let's go to company list. Now, if I open this wide enough, you'll see there's a number behind the uh, slash K. This is your app ID for company list. We've also talked about Kintone has a building function for you to find out what your app ID is when you are inside the app. 
we can do kingdom.app.get ID. And it returns us five, which is what we have for here. That's great. So we will make sure that we define this over here. Again, just to make sure that you use your app ID, not my app ID. Let's go down to the handler. We don't need debugger anymore. We'll keep the console log event there for now. First of all, we need to find out what the value is for company.name and we'll find out what the date value is uh, for this date. So to do that, we'll first define the record, which is coming from event. We will find the company name, which is inside the record. And we will use the field code, which is company underscore name that value. We will also find the date which is the record that date that value. So all these are the one over here. All right, and we'll do the API. Here's how it goes. Because we're returning a promises here. So I want to make sure that I put return. Intel.api, this is the first uh, thing that you have to do when you run an Intel API. We want to find the URL and I'll just use this function, kingdom.api.url. This function is basically returning your subdomain URL address there. We will not dive, go too deep about that for this session. We'll put in the endpoint for this API URL. So this is our URL or where we can send the update API to. Because it's update, so we're using put. And we want to pass the parameters in there. The parameter, the structure of the parameter uh, you can actually find the details inside our uh, online documentation. The app is the company list app ID, which is something that I have to find at the top. The update key is, first of all, we need to define which field are we using. And this time we're using company name field. Remember, Inside your company list, your company name needs to set to be unique or prohibit to duplicate value so that we can use the update key here. Then the value is company name. What this will do is go to the company list app, find the, find the field, find the value of the field company name. And if you find a matching value with the one that I have here, that's the record I want to update. And we'll pass the record object. And we will make sure that any fields that we want to update inside the company list, we will put them here. So I know that the new field that I just created inside company list is last contact date. In Kintone, your structure is after field code, it's an object, and inside the object, there's a value in there. And this is how you need to do uh, your structure when you update the record. So once you're done, then rather than pass the optional callbacks, I will just leave it as it is so that I can get the kingtone.promise uh, and then I can use the dot then 
uh, function here. And I will have response back. Let's console log the response and we'll see if we can uh, get a successful message. Again, you will need to return your event. Now, remember, it is always recommended that you put a DAC catch. This way, in case of something spelling, we can at least catch this error and we can console lock that error so that we know what to do with it. We'll return event here again. Now, if you did put that catch, you, this last line becomes a non-reachable code, so you can delete it, because either way, it will have a return event in it. Let me update, upload this code into my contact log, and we'll, we'll see if it works. So go to your app setting, customization, JavaScript, and update the date. I realize I say update the date, but I, I meant to say update the code, update your uh, JavaScript file, and then you update the app. Okay, so I'm going to open my Kingdom record because this is the company that I want to update. You'll notice right now, last contact date has no value in there. And I know uh, in the event, I actually created, uh, I included the edit.submit, which means if I click save while I'm editing it, this October 2nd, 2020 should be passed over to last contact date. Let's give it a try. Click save. And if I open my dev tool, let's make sure nothing is uh, returning uh, as a bad message. So with Kintone, if you have a successful, you'll see this uh, return response uh, with a uh, property revision, and it will show you the revision number. I will show you what this number means. But this looks like we were able to successfully update the last contact bill. So let me refresh this record. And I don't see any values here. So let's debug. First of all, there's no history and looks like so let me run this save edit one more time our previous revision is two i will change the value to october 3rd and if everything is successful i should get a revision value of three and you see that i have a revision value of three that's great my app ID is five, so this should update the value. And let's see if I am missing any step here. App key, company name. So I know that I have the correct app ID and I know it's executing, it's uploading. Um, I hope I didn't get the wrong code. Let's see. Okay, welcome back. So um, 
we were trying to debug this line of code, and I realized, or we realized where the problem is. So let me go to the company list app. Remember, this is our field code, last contact date. And we realized that there is a spelling mistake with this field code, which is why it's not updating the correct field. So I will make update to this one. Last contact date. There. All right, I'll click save. I'll update the app. Okay. We still have the bugger in there, so let me let me keep it there and we'll go to the company list record and we will try to make an update. So let me click edit. And the date is October 4th. We'll keep it as it is. We'll click save. Revision number seven. And if we go to this record, boy, that October 4th. The revision number is actually referring to this history, history log. So you can see who has made changes to this field. And you'll see that it's Leo at kingdom.com, which is who I signed it as, updated this con last contact date field and changed the new value to this one. You can click the little icon to show where the update is and you can restore to the previous version. Let's go over uh, the sections of this code. Again, we're calling a promise object over here using kinton.api. And we are returning the event once we have a response there. What I haven't done is I haven't displayed the error message and prevent even uh, prevent saving of this record. But you can do it once you uh, once you try it and maybe uh, give me some comments to see how you feel about using this one. All right, again, you can find the complete version of the code inside this GitHub link. And here is the overview of the code that we just wrote. Just remember, you need to change your company list app ID to the actual app ID that you're using. In the example that I demo, I'm using app ID number five. You can find uh, inside this tutorial, you can find again, where would you be able to find the subdomain and where would you be able to find the app ID. One of the things that we didn't talk about is that you can actually click on this line item and put a breakpoint before the record is saved, similar to how you use debugger. And if you go to the network, you can browse to the record.json object and you'll be able to see the request that you have made. So I happen to have the same app ID over here. Uh, is equal to number five. And the record object is last contact date. The value is May 30th. The update key is company name and the value is this again you will see the updated value and you can check the history once you update the record via api again thank you for joining this session and last but not least i wanted to say that there are references available on those uh, website here 
So definitely download this PDF. Definitely visit our website, and feel free to submit questions if you have anything that you would like to find out. That is all for us today, and please look forward to the part two video. I'll see you next time. Thank you.